Are you married or in a committed relationship looking for real advice on having love and enriching your relationship? You are in the right place. Welcome to The Couples Expert with Stuart Fensterheim. Hi there, and welcome to The Couples Expert podcast. This is Stuart Fensterheim, The Couples Expert. Welcome, 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 welcome to this podcast where I am going to be talking about one foot out the door and how do we fix this. The concept of being one foot out the door is really about are you all in in your relationship? But before I begin talking about that very important topic, I hope some of you caught my Facebook Live on April the 18th because that's when I'm recording this podcast. And I just did a Facebook Live talking about how much I love doing my podcast and how much I appreciate all of you just tuning in every week and really spending your time, because we all only have 24 hours in a day, and we get to pick and choose where we spend our time. And if you decide to tune in to this podcast, whether you're driving in your car listening at home, or whatever you're doing, you are making a choice to spend your time listening to my message of love and relationships. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And it really has me a little bit in awe sometimes how many followers really do listen to this podcast, this love of mine about changing the nature of our world. So welcome to this week's edition of the Couples Expert Podcast. Thank you very much for being here again. This is episode 161. Yes, I have 161 episodes. So the other thing I wanted to remind all of you is that if you subscribe to this podcast, you get notified on every single episode that gets released, and we release them on Thursdays, as you know. And if you go back, you know, I sometimes don't like doing this. Because if I go back to episode one, and then I listen to episode 160, there is a significant difference. And I like the difference. Hopefully, I have learned something in doing 160 episodes. Hopefully, it is giving you the kind of content that you really want. If you would like me to podcast on a particular topic, I want to make sure that you're sending me a email at podcast at thecouplesexperts.com. That'll be on my show notes as well as subscribe to the podcast. You can also subscribe to my Stewart's Daily Notes, which is on the website, and you'll get a video tip from me every single day of how to keep your relationship strong. Let's start out this episode, though. I want to share a personal story. When we think about one foot out the door, what exactly does that really mean? As in poker, when you go all in, you put in all of your money, and that It's a one-shot deal. You're either going to win big or you're going to go home. I think in a relationship, it's not that different. And what I hope every single one of you will do every single day of your relationship is to go all in. And I want to share just a couple of things with you. One personal story, Cinco de Mayo is coming up. And I recently, as some of you know, lost my dad and have recommitted myself to my faith in a lot of ways and belong to a synagogue. I haven't belonged in many years since my kids went to Sunday school, but I joined this synagogue and along with the synagogue, I joined a men's club at the synagogue because I'm really looking to expand my relationships outside the marriage with regards to other men, and hopefully that could maybe even lead to my wife and I having an increase in couples' relationships. And part of what is very important to me is being able to sort of respect my father, who passed away in November, and one of the activities the men club was doing is they were going to lead a service and I would be able to read out of the Torah. And that is something that my dad would absolutely be ecstatic about, both the fact that I've recommitted to my Judaism and the fact that I made a decision to join the men's club and also to be part of the Shabbat service. But 
something I had forgotten about was that Cinco de Mayo is also a situation, a social situation for Debbie and I with some friends that invited us on Cinco de Mayo to a Kentucky Derby party at my friend Stephanie's home. And I've been really excited about doing this because we do this every year and we do this as a couple. It's one of the few events that the two of us really just have a blast on. I've gone out and bought a hat and so has my wife. But I was in a pickle because that is the exact Saturday that I was going to go and be participate in the service. And there was a choice to be made. And there was a huge part of me that said I should do the service. But I wasn't sure how I was going to talk to my wife about it. And I also wasn't sure if it was the right decision. So quite frankly, I prayed about it. I thought about it. I thought of my dad, thought about some of the things that he had said to me throughout his lifetime about the importance of family, the importance of a relationship with a wife. My dad was divorced when I was about eight and found his true love, my stepmom, who passed away many years ago of colon cancer. And the decision that I made was to not do the service. And it was a tough, tough decision. But what I chose is I chose love. I chose the importance of being committed to a marriage, committed to a relationship where nothing in your life matters more. Not that my dad matters less, not that my faith isn't still powerful, a Shabbat service can happen again, and so could a Kentucky Derby party. But the promise I made to my wife prior to my dad passing was going to this party because it's an annual party that both of us and I said, no question, every year we'll go because it is so much fun. And quite frankly, it turns into something fairly romantic for the two of us because the playfulness that it comes from going to a Cinco de Mayo party and going to this party in particular brings us closer and we share and we laugh and we go home and typically make love. And the choice I made, I'm incredibly proud of. And I think my dad is looking down going, that a boy, Stewie, that a boy. You chose the love that you're building with your partner that hopefully you'll be around for many, many more years. And you chose love. That's how I raised you. And that's the man and the counselor I want to be every day of my life is to choose love. And going all in has to mean nothing matters more. So you need to make those kinds of choices. If you don't take a risk, a risk on yourself, a risk on your partner, a risk on your marriage, it's a lost opportunity that could bite you in the ass. Every single time that I haven't chosen love, it has. The divorce that I had years ago is partly due to the two of us, my ex-wife and I, not always choosing love, not always finding a pathway to have a true emotional connection where both of you go all in every day of your life. And the learning that that has created for me has allowed me to have a relationship with my wife that will allow me to have a confidence, a security, an ability to be able to just 
know that this marriage is different than every other relationship that I've ever had because I choose to go all in. I choose to not look at the risk, but look at the benefits. To be able to say, this person is the answer to everything that I need and want in a relationship and in my life because the power of us, the power of love, the power of this individual, the choice I made was a great choice. And I choose her and I choose us over everything else. And if it means sacrifice, I will sacrifice. The fear of doing that, that for so many people, is about that fear that maybe the answer isn't within your partner. Maybe the answer is to really pull yourself up by your bootstraps and know that I have to do all the work myself. And if my partner won't go along with what I think is best, to heck with them, I'm going to do it anyway. And that decision is an awful one. And when you're in a relationship that's not working, what ends up happening is you begin to think about that maybe I'd be better off alone. Maybe the right decision here is to pull back and that ending the relationship will bring you the joy. That sometimes, and it's not totally untrue, because when you're in the muck, that is what you feel, that sometimes it feels better to be alone than to be in a struggling relationship. That's true if you are alone. Because as I've said over and over again, there is no more painful place than looking next to you, finding your partner lying there beside you and feeling so dreadfully alone. And how we have to handle that is we have to speak up. We have to shout at the rooftops. This is not okay. You need to turn to your partner in loving, caring ways and say, I've gone all in on us. And right now I feel alone. Right now I feel like we are so disconnected and that we're strangers. Whereas I've done previously a podcast on, I feel like a roommate. I don't feel that we have the passion that we once had. And I'm starting to pull back. So being authentic there, being real, you begin to pull back, but then you have to put the brakes on. And we all have a sense of when we do that. I think it's a facade if you sit back and go, well, I got here and I'm not sure how. Well, I'll tell you how. You got there because you stopped going all in. You stopped trying. You looked to your partner to do the work. You stood back and you began to test your partner. You began to do things and stand back, cross your arms and go, let me see what they do with this. And when you do that, your partner will always fail. Because quite frankly, you've set it up that way. You've set it up as a test. I can't tell you how many people come to counseling, and we all know that people tend to do this about six years too late, that go, this is our last shot. I go, are you kidding? Why? Because we've been so miserable for years. Well, didn't you make a lifelong commitment? Stick in there, go all in, have the counseling be a tool, but don't look at each other and go, if it isn't work here, we're done. That's not going all in. That's not being someone credible that when you get married and you say your vows that say, I do forever. It is forever, and every single person out there can create a relationship, if you go all in, that is special, that isn't just good, it's exceptional. 
The way you do that is you have to do it as a couple. You have to work on these issues of going all in together, not alone. And so often people get frustrated. They begin to live these separate existences. So like your roommates, or even worse than roommates, you're two strangers living in the same house, just meeting for a cup of coffee in the morning. And that's about it. Even if you have children together, you don't share the joy of your child. You will look to each other to do it for you. You don't reach for each other after a while. It's really sad. And I get very sad in my office sometimes because I know the possibilities. I know what it takes. I know that there's a map out there where all you have to do is follow the floor plan, like building a house. But what you guys tend to do is you want to build the roof before you build the foundation. You need a foundation of trust, stability, security, importance, love, passion, sex, friendship, all of these things that without them, you have nothing. Without them, you don't have two people who are connected in a way that is different than the connection you have with the guy that lives next door that's a nice guy, nice couple that might be living next door, but it's just a friendship. It's no different than every other friendship you have. Do you speak to one another about the desire to have something more? And that when it isn't going well, when that isn't there, it hurts. It doesn't hurt a little bit. It hurts a lot. And that the antidote to your hurt is your partner. That you have a concept with one another that you're Siamese twins sharing one heart. And that's a precious heart. And that if that heart is damaged, it will kill both of you. And both of you need to treat that heart with respect and with a passion of treating it and letting both of you be joyful that you share that heart. But what that's going to take is some faith. Faith in your partner that they want what you want. Faith in your partner that they don't want you to feel pain or anguish. They're not trying to set you up to fail. Having faith in your partner that they love and respect you has to have the words and actions be there. Having faith is also, when you're not so obviously in a situation where people are trying to hurt someone, but someone makes a comment that does feel hurtful, and in your head, it feels intentional for you to doubt your own perspective. We need the self-talk to get in place to convince ourselves that that is not what my partner meant because they couldn't have meant that because they do love me. I love the quote from Martin Luther King Jr. that talks about faith. And let me say it to you guys. Faith is taking the first step, even when we don't see the whole staircase. So we may not see everything, but we're willing to at least put one foot in front of the other. And when you apply this to your relationship, it tells you what you need to do. You need to act as if your perception is wrong. And if you can't do that so well, act as if you must not have understood and you need to check it out. So do that. So what I'm asking all of you to do is to have faith in your marriage, have faith in your relationship, and invest in the relationship instead of pulling away. And that you two need one another more than anything. That's what's important here. It's important that the two of you 
really work as a couple in going all in and doing the things that are necessary to be able to have the confidence that you and your partner want the same thing. And the only way that that truly happens is if you begin to talk about it. You start talking about what are some of the things that you need to do to feel that passion and the love and the connection and some of the things that you need from each other that would help you really feel the commitment and feeling important. It's true. You don't have to give up on your relationship or settle for feeling lost or as if something is missing. You just need to know how to connect with your partner in a way that allows the two of you to feel loved and appreciated. But the problem is that many couples don't have the tools they need to navigate the ups and downs of a relationship without causing relationship injuries to one another. Yet they wonder what happened to the friendship. The friendship that you used to share. How did it get from where it was in the beginning of the relationship to where you are now, feeling alone, disappointed, and hurt. And yet, you just can't seem to move forward to be happy again. Thankfully, this problem can be fixed. And that's where the two days and seven conversation hold me tight workshop comes in. Just two days, you will understand what you and your partner need to have a relationship where both of you are on the same page working together to have that close relationship you only once dreamed of. Check it out at www.thecouplesexperts.com. Your relationship deserves the two of you feeling that closeness you once had. So what do you do if you want to really begin to do this, this going all in and truly making a commitment to your relationship? So one of the first things that I'd recommend is you have to take it one day at a time. You have to allow yourself that this is going to be a process that you need to do. And by taking it one day at a time, you're not going to reevaluate too frequently because it's not a good idea to do that. So after taking it one day at a time, What are some of the other things that you could do? I want you to embrace romantic gestures. I want both of you to be invested in trying as hard as you can to come up with some romantic gestures that you know would be important to your partner, whether it's flowers, whether it's greeting cards, whether it's just leaving a little knickknack in your partner's car on the way to work. You need to find something that would suggest to your partner that you are putting in the time and energy to let your partner know that you care about them, not just like everyone else, but in romantic ways. I know something about my wife that if I buy something on Amazon, she does not find it as valuable as if I go to the local mall and pick something out for her. It doesn't really matter what the item is, but from her point of view, that time and energy that I spent going somewhere other than just sitting in front of my computer, which I always do, makes a world of difference. Those are the things you have to be thinking about. The other thing you want you to think about is just the whole aspect of time. Are you spending quality time with your partner? Are you fitting it in? Or is it a special time that you've set aside for the two of you? I would suggest that if we're recommitting to our relationship, we are going to court our partners the way that we did when we first started going out. That means doing things like a quick call during the day and just telling them that you just have a break and you couldn't think of anything else to do but to speak with them, spending quality time is about 
time. It's not about what you're doing. So it doesn't matter whether you like the movie that your partner wants to see. You go anyway. You go anyway because it's about spending time with them. If someone invites you out to a restaurant to have a meal, you don't complain about the menu. You don't complain about the service. What you do is you focus on the fact that you're sharing the experience as a couple. And you want to do things that you know your partner wants. You want to find and start asking more questions about the things that they find valuable. The other aspect of all of this is I want each one of you to do a little bit of a self-inventory and do the work necessary to make yourself the best partner you can be for each other. That you're going to work on those quirks and those idiosyncrasies that you know that sometimes detract from having the best relationship out there. And that the two of you are going to set a goal together to have this commitment to make your relationship the most important thing And if you're already married and have children, even more important than the time spent with the kids, that you're going to look at what you're already invested in. And if it's too much that doesn't allow the two of you to have that special time together to work on your relationship, you sacrifice some of the kids' activities. You make the decision that you've overbooked yourselves because the number one activity And everything you do is the one that works on the two of you. That a date night is not just fit in with everything else. A date night is put on the calendar first and everything else fits with that. These types of things, finding mutual hobbies, for example, things that the two of you can do together that would allow you to have things to talk about and share and get excited about and look forward to and do as a couple and flirt with one another while you're doing them, that you date often and you date intentionally. And what that means is the activities that the two of you do are intentionally designed to be about building on the emotional connection of the relationship whether it's doing a lecture together, whether it's finding a restaurant and you look for the most romantic ones, not just a subway, you find the interactions throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year that are going to create experiences of a lifetime. My wife and I love to cruise. Why we like to cruise is because we lose internet, we lose telephone, and it's just about the two of us. So whatever fun we have, we know that we've created it as a couple and that cruising can be the most romantic thing that you've ever experienced. If you've never gone on a cruise, I recommend it. It is about going all in because going all in means there's nobody else but the two of you that are going to create something that's special. And so I encourage you guys and ladies to think about, have you gone all in? I hope through listening to this podcast, you've recognized some of the areas that you have to work more on to make the relationship special. If you have any questions or any comments about any of these podcasts, please feel free to reach out to me at my email, or at my website on my contact page. And I'm really thrilled that you've joined me again this week. And of course, as always, stay connected. Bye-bye now. Thank you for listening. This episode has ended, but your journey continues. Head over to www.thecouplesexperts.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in this episode, as well as bonus content exclusive to podcast listeners. Enjoyed this episode? Why not hit subscribe now and never miss an episode? 